Before Engineer Ahmed presentation, I would like to introduce Engineer Ahmed for you. Engineer Ahmed Yahya has nine years of experience within the energy efficiency, petroleum refining, petrochemical, ammonia industries. He is a trainer in more than 15 training centers for operation, maintenance, and energy staff to work properly according to the standards provided. Engineer Ahmad has in my working as a process engineer at Swiss Oil Processing Company, SOPS. So now, Engineer Ahmad, this is yours. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I hope you have been high uh, software. Uh, this is our webinar content. Uh, I will try uh, uh, to go firstly in the uh, two contents and to go in uh, in details to calculate uh, the pump efficiency and the pump power. Uh, all of our calculations will be using hand calculation and we'll compare it using, uh, compare it with uh, results from the Aspen Heise software. First three, uh, food, chemical, petrochemical, pharmaceutical, and many industries. And the two main purposes of the pumping system are transferring liquid from one place to another one. Uh, that's called the open loop cycle. For example, transferring a hydrocarbon from storage tank to processing unit. And the second purpose is the is the circulating liquid air conditioner. And the energy department uh, mentions that pumping system accounts for nearly 20% of the world energy used by electrical motors. And uh, from 25 to 50 uh, of the total electrical energy usage in a certain industrial uh, facility operation practices. To have effective system, you must first define the components of the, the pumping system. The system is consists of the suction piping that is used to carry the flow to the pump, and the discharge pipeline that is used to carry the flow from the pump to the end user, different types, and the the pump driver, like electrical motor, steam turbine, diesel engine, and gas turbine, and air system. Air system here is used commonly in diaphragm pump. The piping cont contains fittings like elbows, two measures, flow rate, temperature, and the pressure. And do you know the pump is a device that moves the liquid by mechanical action, typically converted from electrical energy into hydraulic energy. The pump can be classified into two major groups according to the positive displacement pumps. In our webinar, we will focus on the systems that contain the dynamic bumps. Uh, 
Okay, after we know the bumping system component, let's discuss uh, what is meant by energy and the head in the bumping system, the energy in bumping system. There are four forms, uh, four forms of energy in the bumping system. Pressure energy, elevation, or potential energy, fraction energy, and velocity energy. The pressure energy is the energy that, that builds up when liquid or gas particles are moved slightly to a liquid when it's a certain high. The velocity or kinetic energy is the energy that moving objects have, and the friction energy is the energy that is lost to the environment through uh, piping or fitting the two storage tank. The point one has elevation energy due to its height above the bump and the point two also have the elevation energy due to its height above the bump so this bump must supply the difference in elevation between the two points point one and point two the two tanks are open the 16.7 psi in this case the difference between the two pressure energy is equal to zero. One atmosphere minus one atmosphere is equal to zero. The velocity energy at point one and point two are the result of the position of the fluid particle at points one and points two. Two points can be neglected. So in our energy, we neglect the velocity energy. We just focus on the pressure, elevation, and diffraction. Again, velocity energy is neglected because uh, the velocity energy at point one and point two are too small. The, different, the difference in height that the liquid must be raised from point one to point two. We have another three types of energy, but uh, this energy are related to the bump. Before this world, electrical horsepower or electrical energy or motor energy. The energy is multiplied by the efficiency of the motor and converted to the brake horsepower or brake energy or the shaft energy. The shaft energy is multiplied by the efficiency of the bomb and the fluid. So we have here electrical energy is converted by multiplied by uh, efficiency of the motor and the efficiency of the bomb to the high hydraulic energy. We will uh, we will calculate uh, this energy and the efficiency later uh, at this webinar. So, and the friction head that will took uh, more time in our webinars. Uh, the head is actually. Uh, a way to simplify the use of energy. Let's uh, focus on the static energy now. Or oh, the static head. The static head is the pressure resulting from a course the graph told us that the static energy is the pressure resulting from a column of liquid acting under gravity. In this case, the higher the reservoir, 
leads it to the higher pressure you see here produced uh, 4.3 psi and 20 foot is produced 8.6 psi Another thing you need to know is the amount of energy at the bottom of the reservoir is independent of its shape. That is meant for the same liquid level, the pressure at the bottom will be the same, as you see here. Suction side is called the suction head and the difference between them called the static head or total head. A static head uh, can be calculated from this equation and you see uh, this equation uh, of the flow, as you see here. When the flow increased, the static head is fixed, not increased or decreased. And because there is a difference in height between the suction and this charge flanges of the pump, the static head, this is a very important thing. In case we have a discharge pipe and is open to atmosphere, then the static head of the discharge is calculated from the center line of the bump and the end of the discharge line. And in case the end of this shit is calculated by the difference between the elevation of the of the tank surface of the discharge and the tank surface of the suction. The static suction head is positive if the liquid level is above the bump center line. Liquid level is above the bump center line and is negative if the liquid level is below the bump center line. And in this case, it's called the static suction lift, not the static suction head. And also in this case, the static head is the summation between the, the static the fraction uh, head. The fraction head or fraction loss is depend on the pipe size and type, the fitting number and the type, the flow rate and the liquid properties. The head loss is the summation of two loss types, the minor loss that describe The friction loss, we can calculate it through uh, the C equation. The C equation said here the HF is the friction head loss equal the friction coefficient multiplied by the pipe length uh, divided by the pipe diameter and multiplied by the pipe velocity and as you see here, you see velocity squared. This is the relation between the uh, flow and the head. The flow and the head, the relation between them is squared. But the relation between the flow and the static head is constant. Friction coefficient. The fraction coefficient, we can get it from the Moody diagram. Moody diagram, we see in the x-axis, the Reynolds number, and in y-axis, 
the relevant uh, roughness. Our problem here again, how we can get the relevant by diameter. The roughness can be get from this graph. This graph we can uh, put here the uh, pipe diameter. If we have pipe diameter six inch or eight inch, we can uh, draw a line here and with interaction with the types and with the Reynolds number, we can get the friction factor. Don't worry, we will use uh, example to calculate this. Another type of the head losses is the minor loss. The minor loss equation is HL equal K multiplied by V squared by uh, 2G. Okay, our problem here again is K. K is a minor loss coefficient. We have here a table. The K is dependent on the type of fitting. For example, well, if we have uh, 45 elbow and the long radius, this elbow type is so longer radius, the k value is 0.2. And if we have union, the k value is 0.04. If we have a gate valve, the gate valve, what is the opening of this valve? Full open or the half open or quarter open, each one have k, k value. We will use this again in an example. This is a final relation between the friction head and the flow, the friction head and the flow, the relation between them is squared. Finally, the system head or the total this all the total head or the dynamic head or the system head is calculated by the total discharge head minus the total suction head. The total discharge head is the discharge static head. As we said, the height between the, the center line of the bump and the surface of the tank, plus the discharge surface pressure, the pressure at the tank above the surface liquid, and uh, plus the discharge fraction head, as we will calculate. The total suction uh, head is uh, suction static head plus or minus plus if the if the if the level of the shaft of the suction is above the bump center line and minus if the level of the suction is below the center line of the bump. Let contains the equation HSS is uh, suction static head plus uh, surface pressure and minus the fraction head as also we will see in our example. Okay, let's go to our example. We have here a section line contain pipe uh, two meter and uh, elbow uh, three meter here and the valve two meter the bump again we have elbows and uh, gate valve and the check valve. Firstly, we will focus on the suction line, how to calculate the pressure drop on a handy calculation, and we will go to the Aspen Heises to calculate this pressure drop again. Our given data here is, uh, here, the fluid here is water, the actual temperature is 30 Celsius, and uh, uh, pressure, what atmosphere, the mass flow is, is this value, the pipe diameter, eight inch, the fitting, we have fitting here, uh, elbow, 90 long, long radius, and we have here a gate valve, one gate valve. The pipe material is milled steel, so the roughness or epsilon is 0. 0.0015. The first thing we will Calculate the velocity equation. Velocity equation, we have here the velocity equation equal the volumetric flow divided by area. We will get the volumetric flow and area. Volumetric flow is equal to the mass divided by 
the density. We have the mass from the given data, and we have density because we know that this fluid is water, and we know that the actual temperature, so we can calculate the uh, actual density. Here, the volumetric flow is mass by density, so the volumetric flow finally is 15891.7 foot cube per hour, or uh, 45 meter cube per hour. Uh, now we can calculate the cross section area. Area is uh, by divided by four multiplied by diameter squared. As you know, this equation as uh, a result here is 0.35 foot square. Now we can calculate the velocity by dividing the the volumetric flow by the the cross section area. We have here the velocity is uh, 12.65 foot per second. Let's calculate now the minor loss. The minor loss, we have the equation here, HL equal K multiplied by V squared by uh, 2G. G is acceleration. Acceleration in our units is 32.17. So we have two fitting elbow 90 long radius and the gate valve full open. This is the given data in our example. If we jump to uh, the previous tables, we find that uh, the elbow 90 uh, long radius, the K value is 0.45. If we put, put it in this equation, then the HL of the, this elbow is 1.12 foot. And for get valve, we can jump again to our previous tables. The get valve here, full open type, the k value is 0.17. If we put it in our equation, then HL equal 0.42. Then the total minor loss HL is equal one because we have only one elbow here. One multiplied by 1.12 plus one because we have only one valve here. One multiplied by 0.45. Four five since the, since the total minor loss is one point five four foot. Okay, let's calculate the friction loss. The friction loss, as we find in the given data, the piping material is milled steel and the roughness is point oh 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 one five foot. Then the relevance uh, roughness is point oh 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 two five. How we get this value? We entered the to the previous curve. If we opened uh, this curve and draw the line between the pipe diameter here, eight inch, and with the interaction between the roughness value 0. 0.0015, we get the relevance roughness here is 0. 0.0025. Here we see 0. 0.0025. And we can calculate uh, the dynamic viscosity, or we can get the dynamic viscosity by knowing the, the fluid type, it's water, and knowing the temperature and the pressure. So we can get the dynamic viscosity through any software or through tables, or you know it, uh, then the dynamic viscosity here is 0.05 bound per, per second foot. Uh, then we get the Reynolds number, uh, dot V by mu is the dynamic viscosity. Here's the uh, Reynolds number. When we entered uh, to the Moody diagram using, yes, here, the, this is the Moody diagram using the Reynolds number and using the relevant uh, roughness here, the interaction between uh, these two lines uh, give me the friction factor here. The friction factor is 0 0.0195. Okay, 0 0.0195. We get here, our problem is F, the factor. Let's calculate the friction loss, HF equal F multiplied by L by D, V squared to G, as you know from the previous slide, 
the friction factor here is, uh, here is 1.67 foot. Now we can calculate the total suction head loss. The total suction head loss is the submission between the friction loss and the minor loss plus the static head. Here, the value of the friction loss, here's the value of the minor loss, and if the line, if the pipeline is going down, then we type its height or its length by minus. If the line is going up, then this value is positive. Here we have two meters, it's equal to uh, 6.56 foot. We typed here, and because the line is going to down, the direction of the fluid is going to down, then, the, uh, then here the value is, is typed by minus. Here we get the total suction head loss is minus 3.35 foot, it's equal to minus one meter. Do you know that we have here pressure drop with minus, pressure drop with minus. That means that this point, the one star point, the pressure here is, the pressure here is greater than the initial pressure. The pressure here is greater than the pressure, the pressure, the initial pressure because the, the pressure drop here is minus. Don't worry, we will see this in our uh, software. The section line pressure drop here, uh, we can uh, convert the, the head to pressure by this equation, pressure equal density, uh, G is acceleration, gravity, and multiplied by H, it's a head. We have the density and the acceleration gravity, 9.81, and the head is minus one. The pressure here is a difference, is a pressure drop here is minus 0.1 bar. Now we can calculate the pressure at the end point of the suction line. We can calculate it by one minus one here is the pressure of the, of the, uh, the initial point of the start uh, of the section line. The initial point of the of the section line is the one bar minus minus point one. Then the final point point or the final uh, pressure is increased. That's uh, one point one bar. Okay. If we want to calculate. The total suction head, we get this value, this value, the 1.1, and put it in this equation, this equation, the same equation as we saw in this slide. The equation said, again, pressure equal density G and H. Density is 1.1 multiplied by 1E5, it's a conversion between units. And here we have a density, we have acceleration, we get the HS here is 11 meter. Then the head here, the head here is 11 meter. Uh, this is equal 1.1 bar. The head here is 11 meter. This is equal 1.1 bar. And the pressure drop here is minus 0.1. There is another way to calculate the head loss. Let's see the, this other way. This is the, uh, the other way here uh, using the equivalent lens. We assumed that the fitting, this here, the elbow and the gate valve have lens. So we can, uh, we can treat it as we treat the piping. So we have this graph, if we entered here by the diameter of the piping, we have a diameter uh, of the suction pipe is eight uh, inch. And uh, the final point uh, of this uh, line here is the long elbow, as we have, we have here long elbow. So we put this line here and we have the diameter is 8 inch 
we put this point here, the interaction between this line and this line is the equivalent length. The interaction between the line that I draw it and this line in this graph is the equivalent length. So the equivalent length here of the uh, long elbow, 90 degree, is 40 foot. 14 foot and uh, we make the same uh, method uh, to the gate valve we have the same graph here and we draw a line between the uh, eight inch and we have here the gate valve we have the type of the gate valve is full open we draw our line here here is the full open the interacting between our line and this graph is 4.5 foot. Yes, this is the equivalent length of the elbow and the equivalent length of the gate valve here, 14 foot and 4.8 foot. The total equivalent length of the fitting is 1 multiplied by 14 because we have only one elbow and one multiplied by 4.5 because we have only one gate valve. The total equivalent length is 18.5. Then from the same equation of the, uh, of the friction loss, we have here is seven meter and we will add it the equivalent length of the fitting which was uh, 18.5 then the the total length of this line is 23 23 foot is equal to seven meters here seven meters equal to 23 foot 23 foot plus uh, 18.5 five is the equivalent length of the fitting then the total pipe length is uh, 41.5 when we use this this value at the friction loss equation then the result is three foot and finally to get the total head loss then the friction head we have we don't have minor loss here we have only friction head because we used this uh, fitting uh, uh, inside the friction head loss here the friction head loss plus the static head as we said before the two meters equal to uh, 6.56 and because uh, uh, liquid is going down then we use the minus uh, value here uh, so three uh, minus six point five six is in the total head loss is minus three point five four equal minus one point one meter here our value is minus one point one and this is uh, all the methods that we calculated before is minus one so the difference is uh, very very small minus one and minus one point one Okay, before entering another section, I will open my simulation. Okay, this is the interface of Aspen Heises. I will, I will create a new case. I will add the fluid package here. For example, Bing Robinson. And I will add a component list. As we said in our example, water H2O. Water. I will go to a simulation environment.
this tool, this tool is named by pipe segment. This is what we I use, what we will, uh, will use. This pipe segment I will select here and put it in our PFD. The pipe segment needs suction line and the discharge line or input or output and need energy line. Energy line here may be cooling or maybe heating or maybe isolation around this line. I will go to uh, the example to Okay, our example here, uh, we have water and uh, the feed uh, of water uh, temperature is uh, 30 degrees Celsius and the pressure is one atmosphere. I will edit here. I will open this stream, the inlet of the pipe segment and the type here uh, 30 degrees Celsius and the type here one bar as in our example and uh, go to the composition page and type here one. That means this stream is pure water. And go to the condition again and select this value. and type it here as a mess flow so this stream is solved okay i will enter the pipe segment this is the interface of our segment i will go to the rating tab and uh, will input the pieces of the suction line as we have in our our example Okay. Okay, we have the first segment in our piping is this line. This is a uh, two meter. I will bend here. I will click on a bend segment button. A bend segment will open this but I will click the pipe and double click here in any cell and select here schedule 40 and select from here the, the diameter of, the, of our piping. The diameter of our piping here is 200 millimeter or eight inches. So I will select the 200 millimeter. Our uh, metal type is milled steel. Here we have here milled steel. This is okay. Uh, then I will input the length and elevation. We have here the length of this uh, part from this line is uh, two meters. I will input here uh, at this uh, cell two meter. Okay two meter length and elevation change. This line is going down, as we said before, this line is going down, so the, uh, it will have a minus value. So I will input here, minus two meter, minus two meter. Again, I will input the, uh, the elbow, 90 degree. I will add here a bend segment, bend segment will add a new, a new segment. I will select it from this drop down list is uh, elbow 90 degree. Elbow 
90 degree long radius. Okay, I selected here. And uh, I will uh, copy this uh, inner diameter from the piping and paste it uh, to the inner diameter of this elbow to define this elbow, how to connect uh, with the piping. If the inner diameter of the piping is the similar to the inner diameter of the elbow, so the connection between them may be flanged or welded. But sometimes the the outer diameter, the outer diameter of the pipe is the inner diameter of the elbow of the of the connection between them is a, is a screw type screw type. I will add another segment as we see here. I will open segment and select it from the drop down list the pipe and the type three meter, three meter. The elevation change here is zero. There is no elevation change. So I will keep it zero as it is and double click, click on any cell and select schedule 14, 40 and select is a nominal diameter is 200 millimeter. Again, I will add another fitting type. This is a kit valve. Uh, the type of this kit valve for opening is a uh, full open. So I will add, uh, add a new segment to by click on the pin segment. I will click on here, uh, kit valve and select the kit valve open. And do another thing uh, as uh, in uh, elbow. 90 degree, I will copy the value from the inner diameter and paste it in the inner diameter of the gate valve. And I will create the final, uh, final part of our line. This line is two meter. I can add it using the pin segment and define the, the schedule number and define the uh, this type it's uh, pipe or I can click on pipe and click on clone clone segment clone segment make a copy from from this segment make copy here at the end so I will change this, this value to be two meters two meters as we saw here okay So I finished the design of our piping. I will click on the heat transfer, heat transfer page and click on the estimate heat transfer coefficient and type the temperature, the ambient temperature. I will assume it 30 degrees Celsius and I click on the include by pool, include by pool to calculate the uh, the heat transfer, uh, is it cooling or heating between the piping and uh, the atmosphere? Now our segment or our pipe segment is okay and solve it here. I will click the pipe segment again and uh, go to the design tab, then the parameter page and you see here, as you see here, the pressure drop, the delta B, the pressure drop is minus 0.1 bar, minus 0.1 bar. This is the result from the Aspen Heist simulation. What our result from the calculation? Let me see again. Here our result. The pressure drop is minus 0.1 using hand calculation and using Aspen Heises is minus 0.1117. But so the, uh, the difference between the hand calculation and the Aspen Heises is, is uh, very, very low. Okay.
let's go to the discharge line. I will go first in this line, the discharge line here it, uh, has uh, the same temperature, 30 degrees Celsius, and the actual pressure here is uh, this discharge pressure of our pump is 5.7 bar equal uh, uh, 82.5 uh, psi. The pipe diameter here is, here is a six inch, not eight inch uh, as in suction line. As And uh, our fitting here, we have a three elbow, uh, 90 degree is a longer radius. We have here elbow one, elbow two, elbow three, and we have uh, two elbows uh, for five degree. We have here elbow one and elbow two. And we have a check valve at the discharge of the bomb. And also we have a gate valve. Uh, its type is full open. We use the same methods. We calculate the uh, volume flow uh, and uh, calculate the velocity. The velocity here is 22.5 foot per second. And uh, we, uh, we go to the minor loss to, uh, to calculate the minor loss. We calculate the minor loss of the uh, all elbows using the same methods from our tables using the K values. Then the minor loss is 30.8 foot. And also we, cal we calculated the friction loss using uh, the epsilon, the roughness, uh, it's uh, in our given data, and uh, we get the relative roughness from this curve. We input here the six uh, inch, not eight inch, it's a six inch, and to draw this line, the interconnecting between this line and the 0. 0.0015, it's a milli steel roughness. The relevant roughness here is 0. 0.003. And uh, we used the relevance roughness and we used the Reynolds number to get the F factor, the friction factor from this uh, Moody diagram. Finally, we calculated the total head discharge losses. The, uh, here we find uh, the head, the friction loss plus the minor loss plus the static head. Uh, here we find the static head is the pipe here is going up to five meters, it's equal 16.5.4 foot, and then it's going to get down five meters also. Then the uh, value here is positive 16.4 and minus 16.4, the, the, the value here uh, would be equal to zero, then uh, the total discharge head loss is 60.1 foot is equal 80.2. Three meter, then the discharge pressure drop. We used the same equation as we used before pressure equal the density and uh, acceleration gravity and the head is the head. Then the pressure drop in this line is 1.8 bar. This is the handy calculation 1.8 bar. Then the final value or the final uh, pressure of this line is 5.7 minus the pressure drop is 1.8, then the final value of the outlet pressure value here is 3.9 bar. If we use this uh, equivalent lens, uh, then the same result uh, will, uh, we will get the same result if we get the equivalent lens of the elbow 90 degree and the elbow 45 degree and as a gate valve here we have um, here we have the equivalent lens uh, of each uh, of each fitting. The total equivalent lens here we can use it uh, uh, plus the pipe lens and use it in the fraction losses as we said before. Then the losses uh, finally uh, is similar to the first mist. I will go to our software and draw this line to see what is the pressure drop.
Okay, I will add the bump here. I will add bump, the bump needs inlet and outlet and energy stream. This is the bump tool. And I will also add the pipe segment here. This is a pipe segment of the discharge line. I will connect to the discharge line of the bump to the inlet of the pipe segment and uh, create the outlet of pipe segment and create energy stream. Okay, I will go to the pipe segment here and go to the rating tab and to the size page, a pin segment to create our first segment here. Our first segment here is pipe, pipe. Uh, the length of this pipe is two meter. And double click to uh, edit the schedule number and the diameter we have uh, diameter. Okay, our diameter here. Our diameter here is uh, one five millimeter or six inch. I will double click on any cell and select schedule number 40 and uh, select uh, one five zero millimeter. Okay, I will add the other segment. A bend segment to add check valve. Our check valve uh, is uh, swing type. This is uh, common used uh, at uh, this uh, charge uh, line of the dynamic uh, pump or, or uh, centrifugal pump. And uh, also I will copy the inner diameter of uh, this pipe and paste it on the check valve. Again, a print segment or uh, clone from the pipe. So I will click clone and type one. Okay. I will add a bin segment and uh, add it here to uh, git valve. So I will select git valve, open type, and the same method. I will copy the inner diameter to the git valve. Again, I will add, I will clone the segment here and uh, type here three meter and uh, a bin segment to create elbow 90 degree long and copy the value to here the inner value again i will clone this line this is five meter I will clone the elbow. This elbow is similar to this elbow, so I will clone this elbow. Okay, I will select on the elbow 90 degree long and click on clone button. Okay, it's added and add another pipe by click on any pipe and click on clone. But here we have lens and we have elevation. We have lens five meter. Okay, it's uh, typed here. And we have elevation change. The elevation change here is positive five. Positive five because uh, the uh, the pipe here is going up, or the fluid here direction is going to up. Okay, I will add uh, uh, elbow here. It's uh, 90 degree also clone from this elbow. Okay, I add it, and I will add a pipe clone. This pipe uh, length is a uh, three meter and there is no elevation change. I added here, this is three meter and there is no elevation change. And I will uh, bend segment, a new segment, a bend new segment and the selected uh, elbow, elbow 45 long radius 
and the copy is the uh, inner value from the diameter, the inner diameter value to the inner diameter value of the elbow. And I will add a new pipe here. I will click on this pipe and click on clone uh, to add this pipe. This pipe length is eight meters and the elevation change here is five, but this pipe is going down. So the value here is minus five, minus five. I will type here minus five. So the, the length of this pipe is eight meter and the elevation change is minus five. I will clone the elbow to here, the 45 degree clone. Okay. And I will add the final part of our pipe being this pipe is three meter. I will clone from here. Okay, I added this pipe, it's a three meter, okay. Now I, ins uh, I inserted the, uh, the, pi the old pipe segment. I will go to the heat transfer and estimated transfer coefficient. I will type 30 degrees Celsius and click here. Uh, I have a problem in my software. Okay, this has happened to me sometimes that I may need to close my soft my hyces and open it again. But I created another one. I have a problem in uh, my software. So sometimes uh, the pipe segment uh, not solved. Before our webinar, uh, I created uh, this simulation using the same method and uh, save it in my, uh, my PC uh, to use it if I have a problem. Okay. And now I go to the uh, design design tab and the parameter page to see the delta B or the pressure drop of the discharge line. The pressure drop is here is 1.571 bar. Let's see our uh, handy calculation. Okay, so our calculation was uh, 1.8 bar. 1.8 bar and uh, in high is 1.571 bar. It's, uh, it's uh, similar to uh, the difference between them, not, not great. Okay, if I open the performance tab and click to the view profile to see uh, our elevation drawing, if I made some changes in our elevation to show it minus 0.5. Okay. This is our line in simulation. This is our line. This is 2D drawing. As you see here, this is 2D. This is 3D, what I draw. And in our simulation, this is the drawing. Okay. Finally, the suction line pressure drop is minus 0.1 in hand calculation and in simulation is what uh, is uh, minus one three 
uh, minus 0.13 and the discharge line pressure drop in hand calculation is 1.8 and in Aspen high is in is 1.57. Uh, this is uh, very good values. Uh, so our the hand calculations uh, are uh, near uh, to the Aspen Heights uh, calculation or results. Uh, now uh, to calculate the efficiency of the bump, we have also hand calculation and we compare it with uh, uh, Heights software. We have this equation: the brake holds the power or shaft holds the power. This is this power, this power is called the brake holds power or shaft power. The brake holds power is equal to the pressure at the discharge at, uh, minus the pressure at the suction multiplied by the uh, flow rate and divided by this value. This is the constant uh, to convert between the units and uh, multiplied by the efficiency of the bump. So I will assume the efficiency of our bump is is uh, 70 uh, percent and i will add uh, this value here uh, and the pressure at the discharge and the pressure suction i have these values from our example we have here 5.7 but we can convert this value to Say seven psi and the suction pressure the pump is 1.146 bar is equal to 16.63 psi. So I will edit this value. The difference between The difference between them is uh, 66.7 psi. I will edit here uh, this value, and uh, this is our flow rate uh, in meter cube per hour, and uh, this constant value and the efficiency of the pump. This is the value of the uh, brake holds about or the shaft about is 110. Uh, the, we can calculate uh, this uh, energy also using a different uh, unit, uh, kilowatt. Uh, the kilowatt here is uh, 82.2. And uh, if I go to my simulation and this bump, I open it. Here, open this pump and uh, went to the parameter uh, page inside the design tab and added hit the assumed uh, the assumed uh, value of the efficiency. We saw here the duty is 81.03, 81.03 in Aspen Heises. And in our calculations, it uh, it is uh, 82.2. It's uh, similar also. So this is the equation that the high is use. If you if you want to check, we can use uh, high help here. The high help here, and uh, type bump efficiency. and go to the pump unit operation. You see here this equation, this equation is that used in HISIS. That is used in our hand calculation here. And to see our tables of the key values, Our tables, our tables here, we can also find it in heises.
I am sure it's uh, it's in Heise's help. Okay, here. Okay, again. Uh, type uh, fittings and uh, by by Bing or type fittings by Bing by Bing fittings. Okay, and search for this subject. Search for this su subject is specifying detailed by fittings. If I open this subject, you see here the, the table that I used uh, in my uh, presentation. Uh, for example, the elbow 45 long radius, the K value here is 0.2 and the reference is Perry, uh, the fifth edition. Uh, the value here is, here is 0.2. And if I open my presentation here, the value is 0.2. If I uh, search for the 90 degree elbow, the 90 degree elbow long is 0.45 here in high says, and this is the same value that I used in my presentation. So uh, till now, uh, I will show you firstly, uh, I didn't uh, go in details or in deep on any uh, of the mentioned subject uh, to calculate the pressure drop of the by being using anti-calculation and using uh, the Aspen high says software. Uh, and uh, I show you how to uh, calculate uh, the efficiency of the bump using hand calculation, or if you add it as the, uh, the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure, and assumed the efficiency, the energy is calculated, or if you remove this efficiency and input this uh, duty, then the efficiency will be calculated. Okay, I will remove it and went to rating, rating tab. In the rating tab, you can add bump curve. The bump curve contains the flow and the head and the efficiency. You may have speed or not. If you don't uh, have the bump curve, you can create or generate bump curves. Here, I will generate bump curves. The high says asked me uh, the design flow and the design head. The design flow, I input here uh, uh, for the four five or meter cube per hour. This is in our example. This is our example. Okay, here, this value, this value is a mass flow. And because we have the density and we use the volumetric flow from this equation, the volumetric flow equals this value foot cube per hour and the 450 meter cube per hour. So I input, I added here uh, 450. Uh, the design head here, I added, uh, 47, why, why I added here 47, because the 5.7 bar minus the uh, 1.14 bar is equal 40, 47 meter. How we get this? Here, we calculated before the total discharge head. The total discharge head is 58. And we calculated before the total suction head. If we, uh, if we want to calculate the total head, this is the difference between the total discharge head and the suction head. This is the value of the total head, 47. If I add it, or if I click, generate curves, then three curves will be generated by difference in uh, speed. This curve is difference is B in speed than this, than this. And you can uh, use 
your curves if you clicked here in this uh, check i will use curves if you use the curves and you input the outlet uh, pressure of the pump then high says will calculate automatically the efficiency if you removed if you removed this value if you removed the the outlet pressure of the pump and assumed the efficiency then the high says automatically will will calculate the uh, the outlet pressure how the high says calculate it using the curves if you checked in this button and uh, from the plot curves button you can show the three curves and the operating point the color here is not a bit clearly so i will change the color and or increase the thickness here I just uh, increase the thickness of uh, the color of the curves. Okay. Okay. Now we have here the three curves and we have our operating point here. Okay, uh, my presentation uh, is uh, very large, uh, so I I, I can't uh, complete my presentation uh, at uh, our time. Uh, so I will stop uh, till now to, and uh, we may continue on, in another time. Okay, thank you for your time and thank you for watching. If you have any questions. Uh... Thank you, Anjir Ahmad. Okay, thank you, Gad. So we'll be just stopping for two minutes. Uh, just take a break before answering the questions. It will be better for everyone. And this time I will send again the feedback uh, form and uh, forms that my colleague Abdul Rahman shared in his presentation. So kindly everyone, if you missed uh, the links, uh, please try to fill them again. So we will take a break of two minutes, and then Engineer Ahmad will answer all your questions. Okay, you can find on the chat uh, all the links for the ISIS course and our big sale form and also the feedback form. After this, uh, Engineer Ahmed will be more than glad to answer your questions. Okay, I found here the first question is the pressure drop gets affected by the piping material. Yes, it, of course, uh, if the roughness increased, the pressure drop will increase. Uh, and if you change, as you see in my screen here, if you change the pipe material, here, here I used the milled steel. 
you see here the middle steer uh, roughness value is uh, 4.5 a minus 5 if i use uh, for example plastic plastic the value here is it changes or if i use the, the concrete the value is here is it changes so the values of the roughness is affected by the material and also then will affect on the pressure drop okay we have another question so uh, can we use another schedule and yes. why did you choose schedule 40 uh, schedule 40 is uh, common used, is a common what used, but uh, we have here uh, many schedules. So we have here uh, as you as you need. We have here uh, the 80s, the 60, but the 40 what I used is uh, the common. So I used it. And this is uh, just an example. Okay, thank you. We have another question saying how is the pressure drop value negative? No, we have, we have, uh, is it possible to generate, to generate a booster displacement bump in high seas? Okay, okay, this is, uh, this is very good question. Okay, uh, you see, you see my screen here, right? If I, if I used, I will close this, I will close this again. Okay, and I will use the exchange help, the exchange help and the type positive displacement. Okay, I will type bump. As uh, the simulation of boosted displacement bump uh, need uh, dynamic uh, state. What we use till now is uh, steady state. Uh, I'm sure we have in Heise's help example for the simulation post displacement bump. Uh, okay, okay, you, you can you can use uh, the Heises exchange uh, uh, to search for it, but I, I sure I sure it's uh, it's here. Okay, let me see another uh, question. As presentation, as Please, presentation. if anyone have any question, don't hesitate mm -hmm. to drop it on the chat so Engineer Ahmed can answer all your questions. So it seems that we have no more questions. We'll be waiting just uh, one more minute for more questions. Okay, so we have no more questions. Thank you so much everyone. Uh, for your attendance and thank you so much Anjir Ahmad for this interesting uh, webinar. Okay, thank you. And thank you for all and um, uh, I hope you have a good health. Okay, thank you. So.
we will see you in our next webinars and please don't forget to fill the feedback form that so that we can always get better so goodbye everyone for now and see you in our next webinars hopefully thank you Engineer Ahmed again okay thank you